Hi, you guys. It's Lisa. I'm working on an art journal page today. And as you can see, I'm working on a really old art journal that I've had in my stash, trying to use up a few things. I had a company contact me to do a product review. So with working with those items, I just grabbed a bunch of stuff out of my stash, as you can see in the background here. I'm not sure if I'm going to use it or not, but let's see what happens. Here I'm using some tissue paper from Tim Holtz and it's called Postal. I really like it. It's got some great lettering on the back, some postage stamps and things of that nature. I have the other um, tissue paper and I use it quite often. I'm going to put the tissue paper down on my art journal book and I'm going to use my matte gel. And I'm also going to adhere two pages together to make the pages thicker. The paper in this art journal book is not very thick. So I like to do that so it gives it some substance. Then we're going to use some of the products that we have been given from the company. And the company's name is called InLoveArtShop.com and I'll list lots of stuff below. There the pages are secured, everything is dry, and I cut off the edges of the tissue paper to make it a little bit easier. I'm using acrylic paint and a little bit of water to make the paint transparent. And the colors I'm using is Summer Porch and my favorite ocean, of course. You can see me dabbing my brush on the damp towel that's located on the top right. This keeps the, paper, the paint from being totally opaque, so you can see a bit of the tissue paper show through in the back. I needed to give it a little bit more water there and just rubbed it with my damp towel. Let that dry, and I'm going to add a little bit of gesso, and I'm going to use a um, tissue paper technique and I'm going to, uh, first I'm going to um, add some of that paint that I had left over into another art journal book. This art journal book is something that I made with jelly plate prints and I will probably show you how to do that in the future if you'd like. This um, turned out real nice and um, we'll be working on that in the future. I know we've got all of these great backgrounds, but what do you do with them then? So I think that will be um, coming up in the future. We'll work on this book and get it filled up with some great ideas. Here are some items that I had. Um, I was thinking that I was going to use. This is a greeting card that I got for our anniversary and I thought those two little bears were adorable. Here's a stamp set, two, three stamp sets that I received from the company. And this is a die that um, they sent me and it's a key and a heart lock and I thought that was kind of fun. I'm going with a valentine -y theme and I thought that I'd cut these out with some white cardstock. And I really thought they were very nice and very detailed. Also I dug these letters out and a piece of pattern paper from my stash and they have a little bit of gold on them. So I thought that I would um, cover these dies the key and the heart with some gold paint. You'll see in the um, later part of the video, I didn't really care for the gold over the white paper, so I did change it 
and I painted the key and the heart over some black cutouts of um, black paper with the gold and it turned out much better. Here's the book again and all the paint is dry using some gesso on some of parchment paper and I'm just putting it down on the background of my book. Using this technique gives a little bit of control over where the paint is being located on your background. I'm having a little bit of problem with my pages curling and that's because these pages are quite a bit um, thinner. Here is a stencil that I have in my stash. I've probably had it for a couple of years and I've never used it. Well, it's called Falling Hearts. I'll try and link it below. I'm using some modeling paste and just a dab of gesso to keep that modeling paste nice and bright white. Just using my palette knife and adding some texture to the background. It looks really, really great. I had lots of products to use and I didn't want anything to get too carried away. But I really wanted to use this stencil with the little hearts. It turned out adorable. Just wiping off a few of the hearts that didn't turn out too well. And... I could have covered the whole background with this stencil. I really liked it. So now I've got to take that stencil to the sink and wash it so it doesn't get hard. Now this is a stamp set that was um, in the products. I'm going to use some Bursa Mark ink. I'm going to stamp that flourish in the corners with the Bursa Mark and put on some gold embossing powder. I wasn't sure if it was going to turn out or not, but yes, it did. It turned out real great. So I'm going to do all four corners and I'll do that off camera. The letters that I had picked out were way too big for the background that I had everything going on here. So I decided to cut one of these stamps apart and it says, follow your heart. It knows the way. So just be careful. Use your scissors and cut the stamp apart and you can always put it back together if you need to use it all together. And then I'm going to stamp that sentiment on some heavy white cardstock and my black archival ink. I also did the hearts there, you can see on the left hand page, and I used my Versamark ink and I used um, some red embossing powder and I thought that looked really super great. My um, page seemed a little empty, so I'm using another stamp that they had in their um, stash for me and I'm trying to put it around the edge to create a frame for my art journal page. Trying not to smear it, I'm just using it without a stamp block so I can use it as a flexible stamp and get a better impression. There you can see I dropped it on my art journal page but I just used a damp towel and wiped it up. Using my stamp chamois on my stamp and I'm going to set that aside to dry. There's the cute little bears that I cut out from that anniversary card. And here I'm showing you the difference in the die cuts 
The ones on the black cardstock were much better. Here's a stamp I had in my stash and it said, the key to my heart. So I thought it would look real nice on these little envelopes. And I'm just giving the edge a little bit of vintage photo distress ink. I'm adhering the key and the lock to the outside of the envelope and stamping that sentiment with my black archival ink. Now I'm cutting out my sentiment that I put down with my archival ink, just using my scissors and blocking those out. Here's where I decided that the heart word should be in the red embossed embossing powder so that it would pull the red to the right hand, pa right hand page of the spread. So I did that off camera. I'm just figuring out placement where everything should go and I'm going to adhere down everything to the background. Now I'm taking away the portion of the stamp that says it knows the way I felt that there was just too much on the page putting a little distressed ink on those edges I felt that this would pull everything together and I got out my gold paint that I used on the key and the heart and I put a little gold paint on the edges also just trimming off some of that tissue paper that was hanging off. Now I think that the edge and the border really works nicely together. Everything is coming together and the page is much more cohesive. Here where I'm placing the elements down, I thought I would use this beacon three-in-one glue. And I have to say that I really didn't like it for adhering all of these products. I would stick to using your matte gel it has a much better um, adhesion to the piece and it gives um, a nicer, smoother texture. So I would go with the matte medium instead of this different kinds of gels or glues. Adding a little of the Vintage Photo Distress ink around my words. It says, follow your heart. And you can see that I did that heart in the red to pull that color to the other side of the page. Going around those two adorable little bears. And they're a real cute focal point. You can see I'm having some problems with that glue. Like I said, just use your matte gel. It's much easier. And I did end up going over all the elements with my matte gel in the end. It was just more dry time, but a learning experience, of course. As we all go through these projects, you learn along the way.
I really like that die cut. I will be using that again, I'm sure. And thanks to the company for sending me these products. Here I'm using a matte medium to go over everything. Again, stick with your matte gel. It's the best product for this application. When I play back these videos for the art journals, they look like they go really quick and easy. Well, they are quite difficult. Um, there's a lot of different planning and um, layout that goes to these art journal pages they're not as easy as they look so I have a lot to learn and a lot of practice um, I really like doing them and I'm planning on doing one every Saturday and you'll see them coming up in the month of January leave your comments below be sure to subscribe and let me know if you want to see more of them or if there's something else that I should probably be focusing on Everything is dry and now I'm going around the edges to create those shadows and definition with my big brush pit markers. And I know I say this all the time, but make sure that your matte gel or your matte medium is dry because you will wreck the tips of your markers. And these markers can be quite expensive, maybe six, seven dollars a piece and they'll last forever. So just Take care of them, make sure that you're patient, and let that adhesive dry. Just going around all the elements, and I think that it really makes it all pop then. It pulls it all together. This was one of those pieces I wasn't real sure that I was going to continue, but I just went to the end, and it turned out. Something I'm not sure I showed in the video is that I took my black Sharpie pen and I did a whole bunch of little dots around those two bears. It just gave it some um, movement and I thought that it was super cute. Here I'm just adding a little bit of black into those tiles. Now that it is down it looks like those two little bears are standing on a tile floor and I thought that was adorable I'm just adding some white accents with my white gel pen here's that black sharpie and I'm just going around the bears and adding some sketchy lines Pulling it all together and defining the piece. Well, I hope you like the product. Our time is done again today. Please subscribe and share with a friend. Maybe someone else would like what you're seeing. Leave a comment and we'll talk to you soon. Oh yes, and I forgot I used that black uh, chalk writer for the edge. 
I really like this technique and it is something that really works good with defining the piece. So I hope you enjoy and here comes the still shots for you. Have a great day.